الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وكل من اهتدى بهديه الى يوم الدين أشهد أنه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة وأنصح الأمة فكشف الله تعالى به الأمة اللهم ارزي عنا وعن والدينا والإسلام والمسلمين خيرا ما جزيت به نبيا عن أمته ورسولا عن رسالته. Before I start using the phone during the khutbah to fix the word استخدام الهاتف أو حتى في الأمور المهمة يؤثر على أجر الخطبة. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله قال عز وقف عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون فاللهم أحينا مسلمين وتوفنا مسلمين وألحقنا بالصالحين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ثم آمنا All praise is for Allah Azza wa Jal all the time. We praise Him and we thank Him. And we turn to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala for help and assistance. Whomsoever Allah Azza wa Jal guides, no one can misguide. And whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. Allah Azza wa Jal is the Lord of the Oh Allah guides the straight path, the path that takes us all the way to you and to your Jannah and to heaven and to ultimate success in the year of the Amin, Ya Rabbi Al-Alameen. Brothers and sisters, Allow me to share with you a few lessons on Surah Al-Fajr. We turn to the Quran for guidance. Najjad al-Quran fi ahlak fi fadlaat. When it gets dark, when we don't have guidance, this is the book of guidance. This is our book. This is the word of Allah. The unchanged word of Allah Azza wa Jal. The word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took care of preserving. If inna ahna azzadna al-dhikra wa inna ahna al-hafidun. And it's guidance not only for the rituals, it's guidance not only for the Akira, it's for the dunya, for the Akira. If you need help at home, help with kids, with your own self, shakawat, desires, there is the Ummah is being attacked, anything. guidance is always there. It is for us to look where this guidance is. Surah Al-Fajr, Qala Azza wa Jal, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa Al-Fajr, wa Layal al-Ashq, Allah Azza wa Jalla is swearing by five things here. The things that Allah Azza wa Jalla uses to swear by in the Quran are all great things. He can swear by things we can swear only by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as believers. The first one that Allah Azza wa Jalla ups and he has swear by by the the dawn, the daybreak. The daybreak. From the beginning of the surah, Allah Azza wa Jalla will talk about those who exceed the limit, those who exceed the limit, those who, the limit, those who pass all the transgressors basically to be a Christian. And, and, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished him at the end, and then he will talk about the personal level of Fuliyah, the personal level, individual level of crossing the limits. The surah begins by giving us a glimpse. Well, by the daybreak, by the dawn, beginning. This is something that Allah is not talking about that we don't, we don't know of. It's not Sana'i, it's not the day of judgment. It's not something that we don't see and touch and live. This is something that we live and see with our eyes every day. What is it? A daybreak. After a long night, there always comes a new day. And it begins with a pleasure. With a beginning. After a long darkness of the night, always comes the light by the dawn. So personal things happen and it's not clear. Communal things happen, international things happen, crisis, catastrophes, and it feels like night. It's so dark and it gets super dark before night. Know that always there is going to be fajr. There's going to be a beginning. There's going to be a new day. And subhanAllah from amongst all the prayers, and Fajr and Asr as well is attended in the Quran and Fajr and Salat and Fajr can and Shahood and is witnessed and attended by angels. So angels come.
come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this special uh, prayer and fajr to witness who is there and to uh, listen to the Quran is something that's significant. So what fajr wa layan and ashrin when by the ten nights, the ten, the ten nights of Ramadan, or the ten uh, first ten days of the Hijjah, blessed nights, was shafi wa wadzi by the the even and the odd. The creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you look at it, there's always odd things. Prayers, they come in even and odd numbers. There's always pairs and odds when it comes to males and females, when it comes to atoms in the uh, the, the, the creation of everything. When you look at everything, there are pairs and there's odd. When you look at the whole creation from everything, from the Kulli Shaykh, Khalaq, and Azawjain, everything is made in pairs, but only Allah in Allah who are with. Allah is the only one in Allah with whom you have with. He is the odd, He is the one and only subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it can be understood in all of these senses, Shaykh, what what the even and the odd numbers of Allah swearing by all of these things. And by the night when it receives. The night is a place where both the believers worship Allah and put their secret to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the representation of the true relationship between the true believers and the Lord and also on the other side it involves every kind of fujul and indecency usually it happens in this place Nine. Allah is saying, is there not in that and that oath or qasam? Uh, is it sufficient for the one of perception? Is it sufficient for those of rational thinking when Allah swears and confirms? What does he swear on or what is he trying to say? Basically, the surah was revealed to those who deny the existence of God, those who deny that there is life after this life. Those who do not accept the fact that this dunya is being controlled by Allah or created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will be uh, returned to destruction. Allah is giving us all of these examples. As you see, the night every day receiving and the day is coming, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause the whole dunya to receive and the new life will begin and will break and will come through as you see this happening every single day. For every wood, for every transgression, for every Qubiyah, as you see it happening and you think it's going to continue forever, there is special that's coming. Is it not enough, enough of a confirmation that I'm swearing by all of this that you see that there's going to be a beginning after uh, the end, or there's going to be an end for anything that begins, and after that there will be a beginning, a new beginning? Happy that the Qasam and the Hibit, people of Rashid, would always think that this is true. And then Allah will give us examples of those who began and those who end. Adam Tarakay, three examples. Don't you see? And the Arabia with the Qal, don't you consider what happened to those three strong nations? Adam Tarakay, the Qala, Rabbuka, the Ayat, the Ram, that the Iman, the Lati, the Mutla, Mithlua, the Mirad, that's number one. But the Moon, the Ladina, the Jarl, the Safa, the Mirad, number two. وَفِعَوْنَ لِلَوْكَانِ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا All of them قَالُوا فِي بِلَادِ فَأَكْثَرُوا فِيهَا الْفَسَدْ فَصَبَّ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّكَ سَبَّ عَلَىٰ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَبِالْمَصْرِ Three examples for those groups of people, nations. The first one, عَاد. This tribe from the lineage of Nuh alayhi salam. After there was a new beginning for the whole earth, after the, the, the great God and Nuh alayhi salam, and those that he saved with him, no beginning for earth. Generations, a few generations later, those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave that remained, that they are look like people of the bilad, there was nobody like them that was created on earth. They had those lofty buildings, and they themselves, they were so strong and big and tall in creation. They lived at Saudi Arabia, Ajah, with Janub al Jazeera, with Ahtaf, and I tell you, Allah talked about them in different surahs. And Allah gave them such great disease. And they built such, you know, huge buildings. And there was nothing like them or like this that was created on the land. What did they do? 
استكبروا في الارض بغير الحق ان هذا الصور سوره الصور الله سيد فرعات what did they do استكبروا they grow arrogance في الارض on earth on land بغير الحق with, with no truth it's not rightly so وقالوا من اشد منا قوة and they said who is out there that is stronger than us أولم يروا أن الله الذي خلقهم هو أشد منهم قوة؟ Don't they see that the one who made them and made them that strong and provided them with this is stronger than them؟ وكانوا بآياتنا يشعلون. So this is an example. People, Allah Azza wa Jalla has given power and strength and establishment on earth, and instead of thinking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala instead of going left and right like a nuruud, no, I mean the Qurayn on the other side. Allah has given him in the Allah gave him power, super king. He went left and right using this power to help people. They abused this power. They were killing, they were eradicating people in their ways. They were starting wars against their enemies. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. The other example it goes down the same line with the moon. They were given these powers and talents that they were able to make and carve palaces from the mountains. If you visit Petra, northwest of Arabia and Jordan nowadays, or Madat and Salah, they literally carved all of these palaces on the hard stones back then. So you can imagine how talented and strong those people were with the moon and the Dina Jal Sakra. Being well, and the moon who, who created or carved out the rocks in the valley. That's how strong they were. Well, Fir'aun bin Awtad, the third example is a Pharaoh bin Awtad, the one with the snakes. And he could appear to how many Junoon, how many soldiers and followers he had, he could appear to the buildings, as Adam could see the pyramids that he built and the buildings that he built. So the three examples, three of them, Allah has given power. Allah Azza wa Jalla has established. Whether they are physically strong, whether they are materialistically strong, they got everything. What did they do with that? They transgressed Christian men. And they committed and they increased their in the corruption. They used that to make corruption. Isn't it, isn't it relevant what we see nowadays when Allah at the level of nation, when Allah gave nations power and strength and money, and they have the means to change the lives of people to that which is good, but rather they use these means for the, for corruption, for opposing corruption, for killing. Isn't that what America is doing right now? This country with all of these means, I'm not talking about changing the, the life of other people. All the money that's poured to make war after war after war elsewhere, isn't it? Couldn't it be used to change the lives of people here? All of these homeless people. Couldn't it be used? Wallahi, Muslims, Shiyuh, everybody would follow America. I would say you would pray for America. If all of that would be used for the right thing. Pray in the sense of being grateful, super grateful. Can you imagine the people that, and not that, 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 keep saying the rule, that Dr. Nain went left and right to help. They were in distress, and all of a sudden, this king is coming with all of his power to change their life. Change for, with nothing in return. Can you imagine the reaction of those people? They will be the first people to defend him. They will be the first people to wish the best for that person. So this is an example for nations that have been given that. Not only American nations and leaders and countries that they, Allah has given them power. You are a king, you are a president at the level of the nations right now. What do you do with this? What do you do with it? Do you use it for the best of the people? Do you use this to make the life of, of people better or other way around? Or do you use it for poverty, bilad, transgression, and causing corruption? Allah Azza wa Jalla, the surah will go on. He said, فَصَبَّ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّكَ سَوْمَ عَلَيْهِمْ We see the example of what happened to the three of them. What happened to all of these powerful people? Where did they go? Fir'aun, the one who said to Hadi, I have all of these rivers flowing under me. He didn't know that the rivers that are flowing beneath him will be the same rivers that will be the water. Will, he will drown in those water that will be above him. With water. 
he was he drowned. The Tamur al Aad, Al Haq, Al Tamur al Haq, Al Tamur al Haq, Al Tamur al Haq, Kazab al Tamur, Wa Aad al Tamur. The Amma al Tamur, the Holy Book of the An angel who cried. He came to the town, one angel, and he just cried. With that sound, they were shattered apart. You know the sound when you break the sound barrier? And then it's too much, too much sound, just a little bit, just crossing the sound barrier is enough to shatter glasses and cause some this level of destruction. What if it's an angel? What if it's millions and billions of decibels of whatever units, units for that sound? If it's that massive, can you imagine that's what happened to the people of the moon? With sounds, they were destroyed. And the third group, Ad, who is stronger than us? With wind. Seven days, wind blowing day and night, they were taken. They were left like trunks of trees. It would take the people, blow them, they would fly away and come down on earth just like little um, pieces of, of trees. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished those people who transgress. What about if we're not talking about the what about the transgression of Bodu? That would happen in the later times in the Bakr al This is an example. Indeed, your Lord is in the observation, is in the lookout, he is watching. This is what he did to those people. You need to consider as nations. If you are given powers, you don't want to do like Ad or Tamun or that specific fear. Not all fears, by the way, they were transgressions, but that specific Quran. You don't want to follow on the example of those who transgress. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them. Now Allah will move on to talk about the personal level. Human being. Human being and ways of transgression. As for the man, when his Lord tries him and thus is generous to him and favoring him, he says, My Lord has honored me. When Allah subhanahu wa makes you prosperous when Allah gives you, when Allah is generous to you, you think it's me. Qa'oon, Allah has given him money. It's all because I'm smart, because of my knowledge. Our example, all these people as well, it's all because of us. We deserve Until nowadays, it's because I'm white. I'm supreme in this sense. It's because of me. When you think you're given something, it's all because of you, Allah is just in the Quran. Do they think that what we bestow upon them, what we give them of men, women, money, and children, if they think this is because we want good to come to them, because we are happy with them, that we are making goodness come past to them, no, it's not that. They don't, they don't get it. In Allah Azza wa Jalla, look at dunya, Imam Muhib. What Imam Muhib? Allah gives this dunya. This dunya for Allah is like Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed by a dead animal, dead goat. And he was a carrier, dead carrier. Can you imagine when he said, Do you see how this is insignificant to you? It's insignificant. You want to throw it as far away as possible. Dunya, this life, earthly life, for Allah is more insignificant than this is to you. So that's why Allah can give it to anyone, believer or non-believer. What I wrote the deen, what I wrote the deen, but He gives the deen. He gives that relationship with Him. He draws to Him. He gives the deen. And the actual only for those that He loves. Don't think that if you are giving something, it's all good. First of all, you don't want to think it's because you are supreme in a way or another. It's not that. Allah is asking you and look in the shadow of Allah you give If you are giving more or you're giving this or not giving anything, it's all test of Allah. So the human being, if they are tested by the generosity of Allah, Allah has given them, that will not be a comment, it's me, it's my Lord has given this to me. Another test. And but when he also tries him and restricts his provision, he says, My Lord has given me. My Lord has insulted me. It's, this is happening to me as a punishment. We think it's, it's not punishment. 
Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was not punished when Allah جل destiny. All prophets, many prophets, some prophets were given kingdom and money and everything, and some other prophets, most of them, they were tested with shortage, nothing. Not because Allah gave them for this question. This is the test, and this is the test. When you're given more, the test is Allah is watching. Whether you, how will you answer? Shukru? This is from Allah. I don't deserve nothing of that. It's purely a ni'mah from Allah. I am grateful to Allah. You pass the test. You pass the test. And it's good for you in the dunya ni'mah that Abdul Salih, Mel Salih, and Abdul Salih. And on the other hand, Allah is just giving you a test of shortage of stuff, not much. It's a test. Whether you will be patient and think that, you know, maybe Allah is depriving me or not giving me something that He knows is bad for me. Like you sometimes might not give your child sick person or father or somebody who's sick around you, you don't give them water or food, specific kinds of food. It's not because you don't like them, it's because it will kill them, it's not good for them. It's not good for them if you have somebody, you have your son who's allergic to nuts. But he, he little child, he sees everybody eats, you know, peanuts and everything. I want to give it to my child. Do you think it's wise that you give him peanuts at this time? Even, even though he's dying to get one to try, you will be. It's, it's good that you are not, that you are preventing that from them. In this case, it's for their very. Now look at you. What if you are giving? What if Allah is You are playing like gods now. Think about it this way. If you, when you are given, because now Allah has to do more or less, you have another plan. You think, Ya Allah, this plan is not good. You should have given me more. You should have, have given him this, or I'm giving this because it is. Now if Allah gives you, what would you do? This is talking about somebody who's not a believer. You, when you are giving, you do not honor the orphan. You are not going to consider those who need the most. Because this is the same analogy, this is the same way of, of or attitude. You're going to think, you know, why are you giving them more? Give me. But now if you are in a position to give, why don't you give? Especially for the orphans, for somebody who doesn't have any source of income. The only hope for them, their father passed away. You, are, you do not honor the orphan. And you do not encourage one another to feed the poor or the needy. You don't even encourage, you don't even feel that. It's all because of this selfishness. Not only when you have that you don't give, or when you don't have that you don't encourage others to do good, but when you are giving the chance, and you consume inheritance, devouring it altogether. This is the money that belongs to your father, let's say. You are ready to fight with all of those who are the closest to you and take to take all the money to you. You don't want to give your sisters. Because some people believe, oh, women, you shouldn't give them anything. Or you know what? I'm stronger than my younger brother, I should take it all. You do everything in your power out of greed. This is what you do. And now you are coming to judge Allah and say Allah should do this or should do that. Look at you. Look at some of you when the greed is here in your heart. Well, uh, On that day, Jahannam, the fire of hell will be brought, as in the hadith, 70 
70,000 angels, 70,000 handles for Jehannam. With each handle of Jehannam, 70,000 angels are dragging it. Can you imagine? They are bringing Jehannam now because it's the day of reckoning. It is the time that Allah will set everything straight. Justice will take place right now. That day, the human being, the man will remember. What did they do in this dunya? You remember? You will say, I hope I have presented something for my life. He sees the true life coming ahead and he sees that it's all judged by what they have presented in this life. And they will wish that they have presented, they have uh, sent something ahead for their life. The punishment of Allah on that day is going to be unlike the other punishment. And why is Allah stuff to like stern or the or like that? It's because of what we see right now. Do you see those people killing and leveling, literally leveling um, uh, 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 villages and towns in Gaza and elsewhere? Even before, it's, it happens all through the history. Tyrants do that, they don't care. When you have this greed, when you have this, you know, being drunk by how much power you have and you want to control everything, then even the lives do not matter to you. Punishment of that day will be for those people. And none will shake you as he shakes. The way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would ask angels and order angels to shake you, those people and tie them. As he said in the other sword, Tum that he said in the other one as Sabrun that they are the Sukhus, the one that they are in the right and the right merit. Seventy armed spans of a chain will be there for that person. And if you read even the Tafsir, Tum that he is it's like inserting the thread into the needle. They will insert the, the chains into the mouth and build it on the other side. This is how they will be tied with that chain as mentioned in the Quran. Then Allah said, Ya Ayyatuhannasul Mutmainna for those for the assured, reassured nafs, for the souls that are Mutmain, the tranquil souls. Those who, who live this life with tranquility. Tranquility with the qadr of Allah, good or bad, in our sight. Tranquility and Mutmain and peace in whatever that happens to us in this dunya, that is a test for us. We have to go through it. What will happen to them as they are leaving and they that the angels that come to claim their soul, they'll be in the air of the air of the air and of the air. The angels say, oh soul, come to your Lord. Get out of this body. Get out of this prison of the body of this dunya. About the air, of please, and accept it. But who did you do that? You entered with my servants, those who obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were not fancy Christians. They were not at, at, the, at the international level, at the umma level, at the high levels or the lower levels. Enter amongst my righteous servants and enter my paradise. May Allah Azza make us with them. Allah Ma'amina Kul Ba'ayah Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. how to use it to give to Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to use that the right way, 
way because this is our own personal test. Every single person of us, yes, we feel that or what's happening in the world, but we can change at least our perspective over everything. We can look at the plan, we can give the guidance, and now we we'll put everything in